Okay, uh, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me uh, at TT so we can have a chat to you about this uh, current situation, uh, how we see people coming out of it, what the future um, talks for travel, luxury specifically, obviously, um, with you guys. Uh, and I'm just going to start with, uh, I guess, in big, the big question. Uh, you've been in travel for quite a few years. Um, do you think that this is the worst... Uh, thing we've ever seen in terms of the impact it's going to have on the travel and tourism business? Well, if I can brag for a little minute, I've been in travel since 1962, which I don't know, is that 68 years or something? It's a long, I don't know, long time, 58 years. 58 years. 58 years. And I've, yeah. I've traveled 17 million miles and I've been to 158 countries. And despite all of that, despite this long life in this business, I have never met anything so bad as this recent pandemic. You know, we've, we've lived through revolutions in Africa. I was jailed in the Sudan. Um, we went through SARS and MERS, and we went through 9-11. Uh, we didn't go through the Great Depression, but this feels like all of that <laughs> wrapped into one. It's really, really bad, yeah, really bad. Yeah, okay. Um, and, uh... You know, you've always, your company's always prided yourself on having this great uh, network of DMCs, which I'm sure is just built and built and built over the years. Um, has that been something that's been really helpful in this time when you've had to have people getting in and out of countries quickly and to really have that on the ground expertise that you need in these kind of situations? Well, you know, we were the first to roll out DMCs. Um, because actually when I was in Kenya, when I started the business, I was, I was one driver, <laughs> one driver and two helpers when we started the company. <laughs> but um, it was a DMC. And I realized, why haven't everybody developed DMCs? Everyone's developed or operating, but the actual product, the kitchen, is delivered out of a DMC. So I said, you know, I'm going to be the DMC expert in the world. And so I went around the world starting, starting DMCs. And of course, I actually provided what I call the last mile. You can alter the minute you lodge. You can call your guide and change whether it's a morning briefing or an evening briefing. You can sleep in or not. And so it is a problem. Every other tour operator has to deal with an agent. And most of those agents are asleep on Sundays. You know, they're not, they're not with it, not on it. We can call up anybody at any time. We have, you know, we have, I think about 58 DMCs. We cover 136 countries. And um, I can finish my interview in one second and call anybody from Australia to New Zealand to uh, Sri Lanka to wherever it is and talk to them. And so the minute we had a problem, we're on the line. We man everything 24 hours a day. We're in touch with all of our people. How old are our clients? Where are they? Get them out. Expense is not an issue. We get them out. We're not interested. We just need to get them back home healthy, you know, healthy and safe. And after that, they become our really, they become, I've always been loyal clients, but I think it makes them more loyal, especially in this time and age where a lot of people book their holidays on the internet. And guess what? When the internet's in trouble, there's nobody to call. It just goes blank, not connected. That's it. And you're left there saying blank, not yeah. connected. What do I do next? Call Abercrombie and Ken, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so I think, yeah. 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 And I'm sure you're in touch with, with all your different um, parts of the business pretty regularly. And what are you forming a picture of perhaps, say, the uh, places that are going to find it more difficult to recover uh, as we come out of this in terms of them? Um, is there anywhere that you feel might, might sort of struggle to get a fairly quick recovery for tourism? Or for all other things being equal in terms of, uh, you know, borders being open and things? Well, I mean, if you, if you, to boil that down, let's take our main, our main revenue. They come out of USA number one, UK number two, and Australia number three, you know. And of course, UK is Europe and all of that. But um, each of these countries are going to stay near their home. So let's deal with Americans. Americans will stay within America. And luckily, about you know, two, three years ago, we started our own DMC in the United States. And um, I've had the idea for years, but finally got it off the ground, maybe just, maybe only 18 months ago, two years ago. But we will definitely launch America, you know, American, Alaska, Utah, Grand Canyon, all those great things. 
Then Americans were guarded a little more. And I think, I think I gave you the analogy of a tortoise, all right? And um, when mm. a tortoise has been a big bushfire in Africa, and, and the tortoises can withstand a bushfire, that's just grass burning. They just go under and they lie there and hope <laughs> they don't bake. And then, then they find, they come out and they poke their nose out and mm, okay, and then they put one foot out mm, and then they start to travel. So that's what we're going to be doing. The Europeans will do the same. Mm. So, so Americans will be in America. I think the English, as you know, we have Abercrombie and Kent and Cox and King. So we have a five-star mm. brand of Abercrombie and Kent and a, a fantastic four-star brand in Cox and King. And we're finding the Cox and King people will probably come out and visit Europe and the Middle East. Uh, uh, Abercrombie and Kent clients are looking at luxury villas throughout Europe, in France, Italy, indeed the UK. Um, and then Africa. I think Africa is going to be great. Haven't had much, haven't had much COVID there yet. Um, uh, Botswana's had none, mm. I believe. Uh, Namibia, I don't think any. And there are open spaces, small camps, lots to do. And I think you know they'll they'll be very very popular. And in Australia, people are actually mm. visiting around Australia and going to New Zealand, of course, which has has which has cleaned up everything. They don't have a single case in New Zealand. And yeah. so, yeah, what we have to do is get the world to settle down. Get rid of all the quarantine situation because in quarantine, I mean, indeed, including the UK, you probably saw me on BBC the other day. I said, this is ridiculous and they've got to get rid of this. And they, you know, they didn't. And they're going to keep this on to what, June 29th and hopefully uh, saner minds will prevail and they get rid of it because you can't have that on and, and have travel. I mean, it, it goes everything against travel, that particular thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we could perhaps cope with it one way if it was in our circuit or in the market we were going to, but definitely not both. <laughs> you know, you can't travel to somewhere that's in quarantine and then travel back and have two weeks of quarantine as well. Yeah, yeah and we I still don't know much about the these. Um, I had a good friend the other day who went to Greece and to see her daughter. He'd been locked up all this time. Went to Greece to see her daughter. There were 10 people with COVID on the plane. Then they arrived in Greece. She's immediately taken off to a government hotel. And she said, actually, they paid, but it was a, not a very nice hotel for two nights. And then she's put into quarantine. So this yeah. great holiday has is, is been spent in quarantine. Yeah, yeah. It's not, uh, it can't be productive for, for certainly for our industry, can it, go, going forward? And once we do see those kind of things stop, we hope, quarantine and so on, what are you thinking in terms of the general recovery arc? Um, some people are saying that 2019 was a fantastic year, our Brexit stuff aside, but 2019 was a fantastic year. Um, but some people are saying it could be two, three, four, five years until we get back to those levels. What, what, what's your sort of crystal ball telling you or, or what's ANK particularly forecasting? Well, the 2019 was an incredible year, right? I mean, everything went right. And we had the best year of, in our whole, whole history. And so I was so buoyant. Mm. <laughs> Going into 2020, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. And then, of course, <laughs> uh, then it all happened. <laughs> so what do I think? Mm. I think we'll start to get some business this summer, dribs and drabs, little tiny green shoots, as we just described, staycations in and around. Um, I think you get a bit more business. People always want to go away for Christmas. I think Christmas people, the tortoise will come out a bit more, move a few <laughs> steps. So, so they'll do a bit more in Christmas, and New Year, big holiday period. And then I think uh, come uh, next winter, people hate, hopefully it's a miserable, cold and horrible mm. winter in the UK. <laughs> and so that will spur people to travel. And I think towards April onwards, you'll start to get near norms. And then you go into, that's 2021. So I would think by 2022, uh, towards the end of 22, we should be getting, uh, there's gonna be a big, big, a big spike up, all right? Because people will be like 2008. People will not have traveled. And, and suddenly I, I think there'll be a big spike in 2021. And hopefully by 2022, we should be back where we want to be. Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, I hope so. Um, do you think that luxury travel's always been kind of, I suppose, uh, the luxurious tortoise? He can't first, you know, he's happy. He's had the money in the bank and he just wants to know, can he now go out and spend it? Um, so the travel we've seen is coming back first before other travel. 
in this particular scenario, it's not necessarily about money, it is about health. Um, so do you think that luxury travel could still be someone that, you know, the part of the sector that drives drive forward first or are we all in the same boat in terms of just worried about our health particularly? No, I think, no, I think that luxury travel will be the first bank because people with money don't have to worry about money. I mean, you know, that's like, you can tick that box. And so then it's about, mm -hmm. is my family going to be safe? They're going to be, the people with money will be more concerned about being safe maybe than younger people because usually people with money are older and so they'll be concerned about COVID. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have more concern about being safe when you're older. But then they will travel and, and I think you'll find that you'll have this heritage travel that the, 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 the grandfather or father will take, you know, say the grandfather will take the kids and the grandkids, right? Because they're all in one, they've all lived together, they know they're all safe, and they can take over a whole camp. Twelve of them can take a camp, they can take a private yacht, they can take, even if they have the money, they can take a private plane. Um, so mm. it'll be the best. You have a lot of money to take yeah. a private plane to a private camp, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And the, <laughs> what I think you'll find is you won't have that rushing two days here, two days there, two days here, two days there. I think people are going to say, let's have a 10 day holiday, five days there, five days there. Then they've only put themselves at risk through mm -hmm. lots of five days. That's how I would think anyway. Mm -hmm. So something like that rather, yeah. or a yacht. Yeah, but I think you're not going to have the, and by the way, you won't have people rushing to the cities. I think cities are going to have a bad time, including London. I think London, New York, Milan, all those places are going to have a hard time. People are going to avoid cities. You know, they're going to want adventure yeah. travel. And, and it's obvious, nice clean air. Um, I, I, don't think, I don't think COVID survives so well there as it does in a, in a pent up city with everyone next door to each other. So I think open air, adventure yeah. travel, everything I've been doing for, for 58 years, right? Um, <laughs> finally, I get, finally, I get COVID to make people see sense. Wonderful. Maybe it's an accident. A just... and K is <laughs> yeah, A and K is, is the way forward for obviously for those for those obviously who can uh, can afford it. Um, yeah, you mentioned there about uh, sort of adventure travel. I'm also hearing a similar kind of thing. And number one, because if you love adventure, nothing stops you. You know, you kind of thrive off a bit of risk anyway. I guess because you want to be in these places and some of these crazy things. Um, mm. But. I was wondering if it might be tempered a little bit by worries of being, you know, trapped somewhere, unable to get out in a very remote location, or do people just, you know, if you're adventure minded, it kind of stops you in a way. I mean, yourself probably, you're, you're in that camp. <laughs> it depends what adventure you're talking about. You know, a lot of it, if it's an adventure, say, in, in India, I don't think people will, go, will do that because it's too much. You've got to go to Delhi get in, you've got, you know, the crowd, the cities are crowded, whether it's Jaipur, Udipur, all of which I love, by the way, it's fantastic. See tigers, amazing trip. Um, I think people are gonna go to Africa. I actually, I think this is Africa's moment. I think we've been longing for something like this mm. to happen. You know, Zambia, nobody goes to Zambia. I mean, it's empty mm. and full of animals. And this is the moment, you know, beautiful rivers, you got walking safaris, uh, uh, trekking trips, uh, camping out, seeing the great skies above you. I think Zambia, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Namibia, Botswana, I think that's gonna, this is gonna be mm. that time for them, yeah. Do you think we really need to try and just get people back there as soon as possible to make sure that these conservation projects can continue? We're having a lot of problem, uh, as, you, as you surmise with conservation. I had a long call this morning and, um, we actually started conservation in 1982, a long time ago, something called Friends of Conservation. And indeed, mm -hmm. I spoke to the Prince of Wales yesterday uh, about this, because he's our patron, uh, patron of, of FOC. And, you know, mm -hmm. the problem is there's, there's no money. There's nobody going into the parks anymore. You know, we brought black and white right in for Marine and Game Reserve, other Abercrombie Kent Philanthropy. Um, and we've got to get people traveling again soon, because I think the animals are going to be threatened until we do that and you know we're, we're doing the best we can uh, you know we will we will keep on funding it uh, Abercrombie Kent Philanthropy and FOC in the hopes we can keep it going but it's 
got to change quite fast. We've got to get people moving. I mean, since our last talk, um, I think that wonderful gorilla in, in um, Uganda, Rafiki, has been killed, the big silverback, which I actually helped, I, I habituated all those gorillas with the president of Uganda many, many years ago. And uh, Rafiki is one of the more recent uh, silverbacks, but, but he was poached about three days ago, four uh, days ago, yeah. I think since our talk, yeah. Which is unheard of, that, you know, in, in, in the Gwendy National Park, yeah. yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah, so we've got so to So maybe we need to do, uh, yeah, maybe we need to just say, look, even, you know, all your wonderful customers, uh, I know everyone's worried about their finances and how can we charitably to the right people with what we've got. I personally sent $50, it's nothing, you know, to doctors, uh, uh, guerrilla doctors in, in Rwanda, just to feel I was doing something. So maybe we need to say, look, guys, even though you're not traveling, these, these, these projects need our support. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I, will, I will personally, not Abercrombie and Canada, right? I'll personally match any donations that people would like to make to Friends of Conservation, all right? They can write to me through you and anything they yeah. match, anything they say, I will, I will personally match it. Yeah. Hopefully we can, yeah. as you said, what a nice idea. At least we can get the ball rolling, oh. right? Because we've got something. I'd yeah. love to do that. Yeah. Because we have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something. Yeah, we can't have, we can't have things like for all that hard work that's been done to uh, support these, uh, you know, this amazing wildlife and then for it to just uh, be gone straight away like that is just, it's heartbreaking. Um, and what about the sort of the, um, you know, the human um, support as well, obviously, you know, jobs, um, tourism gives so much work to so many uh, people. It's also really important, isn't it, that we try as best we can to get tourism up and running so that uh, small local communities who are just reliant on uh, hotels, projects, resorts can get back into this, I, I suppose, because everybody's had different support levels from all around the world when they buy their government. No one like here, but I don't think. Um, we need to support no, that you, human side as well, don't we? Yeah, the, the UK has been remarkably generous and, you know, from that, from that perspective. We've been working with them closely, but I mean, if you take other countries around the world, you know, be it Botswana or Kenya, and, you know, there the, are the, the no big government handouts there at all. I mean, it's all to do with the businesses and we're all trying to do our best but yes it's quicker we can get what i call the green shoots into big thick bamboo clumps <laughs> it would be better i'm tired of everyone saying oh jeff we got a three green shoots I said, Where, where's the clump there's, <laughs> there's no clump uh, yeah, clumps yeah. Again, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh. Yeah, that that that'll be amazing. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look for clumps now instead of <laughs> instead of green shoots. Um, <laughs> do you think this uh, does this change the nature of uh, tour operating? I mean, as you said, you know, you've you've got this long established network yourself. Uh, you know, not always controlling all of the elements of the of the, the travel journey, if you like. Um, but do you see changes that will have to be made for your sort of your average tour operator out there um, off the back of all this? I tell you what, I tell you what's going to happen. People are going to want to deal with real professionals, right? Travel agents. Mm. They're going to the travel agent. I think will become more important than ever before. As long as they're smart you know, and clever, because they, I mean, you know, I've been all those countries. You can ask me any question you want, and I'll answer you because I've been there. So as long as they're well traveled and they know what they're talking about, they're going to be very valuable. Because who's going to book anything? Honestly, everything else is being booked off the internet. Toilet rolls, all that stuff. All right, <laughs> but but that's a toilet roll. We all understand what a toilet roll looks like, right? And I can buy a toilet roll off the internet. But if I want to plan a great adventure with adventure travel, I want to know, mm. am I going to be safe on this trip? Who's going to take me? What company is going to take me? Where do I put my money? Is the company we put our money with, is it safe and secure? Has it been for around a long time? Do I get my money back? Who do I call if something goes wrong? Those are all the questions. And as long as you can answer those immediately, you're going to be fine. So I think it's going to push everybody back to expertise, which is where it should have been in the first place. I think, again, the internet of travel is not the greatest, not the greatest place to book it. Because as I, keep, as I said earlier, if you get into trouble and you call, there's nobody there. 
You can't get your money back, you can't go out, you can't do anything. So this is the time for the yeah. real professional travel agent to make the most of it and come back. Yeah, as uh, I was talking to, uh, I'm sure you know Misty from Virtuoso recently, and she was saying oh. that you know Matthew Upchurch's line um, is quite often never waste a crisis in the sense that you know you have to find some opportunity um, out of a crisis, otherwise you know you you never earn from it. So I think, as you said, for those agents and uh, professionals who really do know their stuff, it's a chance to, to shine. Um, what do you think it takes then for uh, a, t a travel agent? To, uh, how, how are we still going to get through the next few months? I mean, it, it's hard. This is not a high margin business. No one's, I'm sure you've got quite, you know, you're well leveraged as a business, but not everyone's got a lot of money. How are we going to get through this? few months do you think as a travel agent or operator out there might might be listening well you know i mean thank goodness abercrombie and kent had no debt we'd be making lots of money and so we were very well placed actually going into this um i think that i mean yeah it, it's, it's going to be difficult i mean because if you if you have no debt you can somehow try and stagger through um but it's going to be difficult. And so the sooner we're back on stream, it's, it's going to be better. I mean, travel, you know, travel companies on the whole are rather like restaurants, aren't they? They've got enough money for three to four months. And then the cash starts to run out. So, yeah, um, I just pray that they're all fine, you know, and, and, and can make it because they're really useful and, and really critical. Do you think people are going to be a bit scared of getting on an airplane? I mean, air, airlines tell me the air that pumps through is as, as, as good as you get in a hospital. Um, in terms of the filtering, but do you think people are just scared of actually getting inside a plane? You know, I think I'm, I think I'm more scared about going into the airport. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I mean, there's so many people. You know, and I told the other day, if you keep the two metre regulation, in order to board one of those huge A380 Airbuses, the line will be 1.3 kilometres long. <laughs> No, how are you going to do that? <laughs> you can't do that. And so, so mm. it's impossible. I mean, I think that, mm. you know, I don't, I don't think I'd go so far as to have a change of clothing and come in with a, with a super wheat spray or something <laughs> and pump and spray down my seat. <laughs> then rush to the loo and change and shove on my rubber gloves <laughs> and... <laughs> no, I think... Um, <laughs> I think it's yeah. all about, I guess, all about I, basically washing your hands afterwards. You know, maybe spray the seat or yeah. have, a, have a tissue. I just have a tissue. I go, blah, 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 yeah. and sit down. And so, you know, I think that's yeah. fine. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think the airlines have done a great job with the air. I've read the same too, mm. that it's like an operating theatre. And, you know, mm. if it's good enough for an operating theatre, it's good enough for me. So I'm sure that's fine. Yeah. I think that luckily... Yeah. I, luckily, I travel first class. If you don't do that, I suppose the back of the plane it may be, it may be a bit. Yeah, <laughs> the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I agree. Yeah, sure. No, but it is good. So I've, I've I've heard them all saying, you know, they will be giving energy kits now. Will be, you know, your mask, sanitizer, gloves, so that every passenger on most, you know, reputable airlines, probably the bigger long haul, um, you know, will give customers those little reassurances that it's um you know they're trying to take care of them in those small ways um as well as the bigger ways in terms of cleaner aircraft and things like that and what about um no, uh, let me add one thing. private knew all the, um jet i know all the ceos of all these airlines with the british airways easy jet whatever okay and the fact is they're dedicated dedicated to making sure this is correct and they're all thoroughly okay. responsible professional people and as they say that, it should be fine. Yeah. You know, and everything, fish think it from the head. So they will have a very good idea at the top. It should be fine, honestly. Because yeah. nobody's, nobody's taking this as like, like um, President Bolsonaro. <laughs> this, it's a light thing. Yeah, this, this is, is not a, a, a very, no, this, this is a very serious matter. And they yeah. are, yeah, they're taking it very, very seriously. Yeah. Um, is there an opportunity for um, more business travel uh, for those people who are perhaps on the fence of thinking of, oh, can I afford to upgrade, upgrade? I think yes, uh, for those people who were considering it. Um, I think there is potential for tour operators, travel agents, airlines to really 
um, you know, make the most of that in a way, get more people traveling in, in this class. Um, and you also have your private jet part of the business. Um, do you see that? Does it already do well? I mean, where, where do you see that um, going? Have you had people contacting you saying, you know, I go get get me in, uh, let let you know, let me go on a private jet tour rather than go on my own. Well, a person called me up just the other day. He wanted a private jet from Rio de Janeiro back to uh, back to Europe. Um, but they're sort of one-off type trips. I mean, I think if you go, you know, if you go again on my inspiring expeditions by Jeffrey Kemp, I'm going to instead of just undo one around the world, which is just about sold out, we just put it off yesterday, actually, for one year. It was going to be this October. I think you and I discussed it before. But we've, over yeah. the last two days, we've said, you know, we can't, we can't handle this quarantine everywhere. We can't. And so we put yeah. it off for one year, next October. And it is just about full anyhow. So that will go. And then I'm going to launch a lot of these seven to 10 day trips, um, mm. all by private jet. I mean, you know, that mm. could be seeing the strands. It could be a great trip to Africa, mm. an unusual one doing Malawi, uh, Zimbabwe, mm. and Mozambique. But in some unusual mm. Madagascar, I had a long talk about Madagascar the other day, Gabon. So, so regional unusual trips by private jet my guests would love that yeah i think so but it's not a big it's not a big volume movement private jets are expensive yeah. Yeah. there's no yeah. unfortunately getting around that uh, yeah yeah <laughs> some of the prices and they are eye-watering yeah. is to you know it's a cliche yeah. but they are quite quite eye-watering even for very they're very, right. very wealthy people. by the way they're eye-watering so. <laughs> Mentioned, I know Africa is obviously a big passion for you. Um, what's what's still on your own um, bucket list left to left to do? You know, what's still left for you to uncover around the world? Well, I think on, on a global basis, you know, for, for whatever reasons, I've done very little in West Africa. Probably because I can't speak French properly, so <laughs> I tend to say the other side, you know, the English side. Uh, so Francophone Africa, and I've, you know, I've been to a few. I've been to Gabon, which I love. I'm going to go go to Benin in, in October, um, next October now, and my around the world jet. I'd love to do more in uh, Niger, Sierra Leone, those mm. Guinea Bissau, those sort of places. So that's that's been yeah. on my list. Um, I haven't been to any of the stands. You know, I've been to one. Yeah. I've been to Uzbekistan. But I'd like to all the stands. That would be a great private jet trip. And I'll do that by private jet. Yeah. Um, there are some great diving places I haven't been. I haven't dived off to Ind Indonesia. I'd like to do that and plan that. I'd definitely do that. And then I think from, from my inspiring expeditions, I want to uh, take a plane. I want to go actually to try and negotiate with the, with the US Navy to see if I can let, go on a plane and land a plane, not land it myself, in a plane, land with a, <laughs> on, an air, on an aircraft. <laughs> On an aircraft carrier. Wow. That would be really super cool. And I'd also like to go maybe do that, the Mariana Trench, which is seven miles deep in the South Pacific off Guam. That would be, be an expedition. You know, I've done the other one. I've, wow. I've flown the, the private jet, the electric lightning, at like, you know, 65,000 feet at Mach 2.2. That was cool. And, and sadly, the, sadly wow. the, plane, the plane blew up about six months later after my trip yeah so when i got down i said that was hairy and, and yeah so the pilot was you know so at least i did that yeah i don't have to do that oh, again gosh wow no yeah. gosh that's 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 quite a few things there yeah wow <laughs> but yeah that's happening quite quick now isn't it we saw, obviously, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah i've been to the south pole i've been to the north pole so i'm just now now i'm getting to the end of the list yeah, you've got to save some places for the rest of us, Jeff. You know, you can't be taking all these places yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on that note, actually, um, another trend I'm kind of hearing is that people have lived through this crisis and worried about their loved ones and what's happening in the world and life is short. They will be looking to their bucket list and saying, I'm going to do it. I've been putting this off. Um, do you hope, do you think that will be the case or do you think A&K customers already kind of you know, travel in that way anyway? Or do you think there'll be lots more people who are keen to get that bucket list sorted? 
You know, I think you're right. I don't like to call it a bucket list. I like to call it the things I've got to do before I die. And it's a bit longer <laughs> than a bucket list, but it's something like, wow, I reached this age and I've never seen the pyramid. And you know, a lot of my, a lot of my guests work so hard. They only take like, if ever, take a holiday, if ever. And suddenly they, my God, I've now got all this money in the bank and I've never seen the pyramid. Mm. I've never done an African safari. Can you imagine living all this life mm. worth several million dollars and you haven't been on an African oh, yeah. safari? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And so yeah. I think people will do that. They'll go and see Machu Picchu. They'd love to do that. They'd like to go and go diving, diving off Palau like I did. I'd always long to go diving off Palau. What? And thank goodness I did it. I remember it forever. Much more than making a million dollars. You know, that's easy. But diving off Palau is complicated. <laughs> so, so I think I we're going to get a lot. <laughs> not in a journalist lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're going to get a lot of people, a lot of people saying, where, where do I have to go before I die? Yeah. And by the way, they don't have that long because when you wake up, they finish working, right? And then they're going to die, mm. right? Mm. And in between, there's a short spell <laughs> before they get sick. <laughs> so they've actually got a few clean years to get going and they've got to do like five trips this is a salesman in me I want them to do five trips a year yes. five <laughs> then I'll be happy okay? what I would say is that I research everything myself I still travel 200 normal times normal times when I don't have a beard and sitting at home <laughs> usually I travel <laughs> 280 days a year I'm always traveling and Abercrombie and Kent, our DNA is travel. It has been for years. So we know what's safe. And are we going to send anybody to somewhere that's not safe? Of course we're not. Why? Because we don't want them sick and we don't want to pay for them to come back. All right. We want to, them to have a good time. And so of course not. It's all like mm. relying on the captain of an airplane to make sure that the air is right. We can't check the air. We presume with a good brand, it's right. And so I think you have to do the same with travel. Mm, yeah. Does that then go down into the level of accommodation as well? Uh, perhaps asked, you may have been happy to stay in a three, four little backstreet boutique place, but now you might want to go with the sort of the luxury brands that you feel more comfortable with in Four Seasons, you know, those big guys we um, see in lots of different places now. Or do you think people still would, would like that kind of quirky off the beaten path? Um, accommodation well it was a big trend as you know where people were trying to get um more original trying to get to to a boutique hotel which had been discovered which was cute and nice and very instagrammable uh, because then they could boast about they discovered this one place in the back streets of somewhere that's so amazing you know um that's over i don't think people are going to do that i would not do that I go and look at it, but no, I don't want to do that. Anymore. I want to go where there's a good, a good fashion brand, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's in Abercrombie and Kent, we have the sanctuary brand of our lodges and hotels and ships. I mean, otherwise you've got Four Seasons, you've got uh, Peninsula, you know, the main brands that we know of. Uh, you can be sure they're going to make sure everything is fine. And um, that's what I believe. I think people will not go to the little places anymore. Uh, from the tour operator side, um, would you be um, acquisitive at the moment? Of, you obviously took um, things uh, last year. Would you be looking for opportunities um, next month, year to, to bring into A&K's fold? You said acquisitive rather than inquisitive. <laughs> Losing my Inquisitive. <laughs> So would we be looking to acquire <laughs> some companies? <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have a great partner with Manfredi Lefebvre. We've known each other for, I don't know, hundreds of years. I feel like that. And um, <laughs> he and I work very closely together. We're going to be looking from the sanctuary, from our sanctuary, uh, uh, our hotel end and rivership end. We definitely want to grow our rivership business, grow our lodges and hotels. And we'll be looking for just what you said, actually. A small lodge is finding it more difficult. Wants international branding, mm -hmm. wants to be known there, wants, mm -hmm. wants volume of business, which we can turn mm -hmm. on. So very much in that area. Yeah. DMCs, definitely. Small, really 
uh, small DMCs at the high end, definitely looking at them. And definitely looking at tour operating companies of our branding, yes, definitely. All, all mm. of them. Mm. You know, so we're, we are okay. feeling that way inclined. Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, that's good, good to hear that, uh, you know, investment will be there for, for the right kind of companies, um, uh, you know, co coming, coming out of this. That's really good to hear. Um, well, I think that's probably um, all my um, questions. I'm sure we could have um, talked for a lot longer, but I'll, I'll leave it there two minutes. I think it's probably a good time. Um, so, again, thank you so much um, for the time. Um, to talk to me i really do appreciate it and uh, hope to be back out traveling um very soon <laughs> <laughs>